So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. I finally got the Galaxy Z Flip 4 phone. Now, I've actually had it a couple of days, but I wanted to take a look at it first before I went ahead and made a video. Now, to be honest with you, I have actually traded in the Galaxy S22 Plus for this device because I'm not quite on board with a $1,000 Plus for this just yet. However, I do feel like this phone is pretty... Amazing. We're going to talk about that here in this video. This is, you know, a more refined version of the Galaxy Z Flip 3, which is a pretty good thing because that phone was already fantastic. You can see it has a dual camera right there. The edges now look more polished, a little bit more beautiful. You can see the hinge has been even increased in durability. So overall, this phone just feels fantastic in the hand in terms of a premium feel. Samsung is basically taking their you know chops and making premium phones and just brought it over here to the galaxy z flip 4. now this one also does have a crease right there in the middle so you will see it on certain angles i particularly see it on white screens a little bit more you can see right there but it's not a big deal because most of the time you'll probably have it like this and then it kind of you don't really notice it too much and then you just kind of close it like that and you're on with your day and i think a lot of people will just be using this quickly for communications closing it or maybe using it in the flex mode to use it as a camera or something like that. So there are some pretty neat features to this phone overall, which we'll discuss in this video. But I got to say, so far, I think this is a pretty amazing phone. I'm not quite sure. I'm a little bit more impressed than the Galaxy Z Fold 4, but I'm still liking what Samsung is doing here with the Flip series. All right, so when it comes to the display, we're looking at a foldable dynamic 2X AMOLED display. This is, you know, 120 hertz, so it's gonna be a pretty smooth panel. Overall, you should expect that at the price point Samsung's charging. One thing I'm not sure I'm a big fan of is the 22 by nine aspect ratio. Reason for this is it feels quite thin and the phone feels quite long to hold. So it feels a little bit awkward. And when you're holding it like this, it's just, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm a fan of this aspect ratio. However, I do have to say that it's definitely a wider display than the front display on the Galaxy Z Fold 4. However, you know, that's the cover display. On the inside, the Z Fold 4 is much larger. Now, this display also is gonna give you a similar kind of feel to, you know, a regular Samsung smartphone when it comes to just kind of the color accuracy, stuff like that. Even the features within display settings is quite similar as well. You'll see you have vivid modes, natural modes, things like that. And you do have the ability to turn off that adaptive refresh if you do want to get a little bit better battery life. There's also a punch hole that is not hidden under display or anything like that. So when open, this does feel just like pretty standard Samsung display. However, there's one thing I want to note about this phone, and that is the crease. You kind of feel the crease more with this phone. And the reason why is because on a regular slab style smartphone, you are scrolling a lot and your thumb is just constantly going through that crease. So it's just something I'm not a big fan of with the Galaxy Z Flip 4. I just keep feeling the crease all day. And I know you could say, well, scroll up here or scroll down here, but my brain's not gonna remember to do that all day, every day. So that crease, I just feel it a lot more on this phone. Whereas on the Z Fold 4, I can kind of use the sides of the phone because it's much larger. I feel the crease a lot on this one. However, if you scroll from the bottom, you'll be fine. Over here on the front cover display, they do have some nice widgets on here. You can see you can see your weather, you can see what's playing. You also see notifications, you can set a timer, and those are customizable as well within the settings. So you can go ahead and go over here into settings, and we'll go over here to cover display. Just type in cover display, and you'll see there are some widget selections you could change in here. You can reorder them how you want. You can put Samsung Health in there, smart things, things of that sort. So pretty cool customization. You can even change the clock style on here and get some nice customization going on for that cover screen. So Samsung's hooking you up with a ton of features for the display panel, but overall I'd say it's pretty good display. It's not better than the S22 Ultra in my opinion, or even the S22, but it's pretty similar to, you know, just a premium Samsung display on the inside. So it's good. It's really about the flip action right here on this phone. It's really about it being a folding phone Technically, it's a flipping phone, but it's still a foldable because it folds in half. So pretty cool. It's fun to use. That's what's important here. Now, when it comes to the software with the Galaxy Z Flip 4, you are looking at some pretty cool camera features 
where you can go ahead and kind of place it like this in this flex mode. And then when you're taking a picture, it's going to be really great for those of you who do TikTok, you do Instagram, stuff like that, because you can basically just look at the screen just like this without having to have a tripod or anything. So it's great for social media creators and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Then I just got to mention about the software. One UI 4.1.1 is on board here. It's the same across, you know, Samsung's other phones. So you, you're getting a lot of features here for the money, lots of features. You go to down here, you do get the advanced features in the Samsung phone. So let me go type it up here because I can't find it while I'm looking through a camera. So you could see advanced features. There's gonna be your normal suite of stuff in here. So motions and gestures, lift to wake, all the good stuff is here. There's no S Pen though. And I think Samsung could find a way to stick one in here if they wanted to, but I don't think people getting this phone really care about an S Pen. So I'm not going to say it's something they should put in this phone, but they could if they wanted to. This phone right here, you know, just runs your traditional Samsung software. It's, it's good. It's staying up to date. It's got several years of support. And what I'm liking about what Samsung's doing lately is basically no matter which Samsung phone you use, you are getting a similar experience across the board. It's reminding me a lot of what Apple does, you know, having, you know, similar services, experiences across their product lineup. I love that about the Samsung experience as well. This is very similar to using a Z Fold 4, just in a different format. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. So it doesn't matter which Samsung phone you go with. They all run about the same. You got your Galaxy themes. You can change your wallpapers. You got the full Android experience. One thing I'll say about the software with Samsung phones, though, is that they kind of provide all their Samsung suite the Google suite, they throw in some Microsoft. So there's a lot going on here. A lot of things, a sign in tool, you know, it could get a little bit convoluted. And depending on which service you use, you can kind of get trapped into using Samsung services. And then, you know, you go to a different phone and then they're all on your Samsung phone. So the, if you want to be in this ecosystem then use all the Samsung stuff, if you, if you just want to be on Android phones, use all the Google stuff, and then you'll be able to switch out to a different Android phone, no matter what the maker is a lot easier. Okay, so let me talk about what actually excites me with this phone. And it's got to be this one element of this device. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's basically the performance. It's the Snapdragon chip that's in here, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, combined with eight gigs of RAM, which I think is the sweet spot for not having any stutters and slowdowns on a Samsung phone. This phone just screams through pretty much everything you do. And that's important because when you're paying this kind of money for a foldable phone, you do want to have, you know, a really good, strong performance. But here's where, you know, the Z, the Z Flip 3 was strong as well. But here's where it's way, way better. It's the heat. So the phone doesn't really get hot. You know, it doesn't really warm up too much. And that heat management has been greatly improved. And I've noticed just the efficiency of performance has been better as well. So what I mean is, you know, when I got my S22, S22 Plus, those phones were kind of like jumpy, a little stuttery out of the gate. This one has been basically flawless out of the gate. And again, you don't know how important it is when you're using a phone to have it not heat up when you're using it heavy, like you would be using a phone like this or, you know, the Z Fold 4. Neither one of these new phones do that. And that's what makes me excited and makes me feel like this phone is much more refined than the previous version so definitely and then they made these sides a little more shiny so that also looks a little more refined as well in my personal take i also want to mention that fingerprint sensor right there because i really love having that hardware based fingerprint sensor that makes it feel like you're basically never going to miss at all and um, i I'd much rather have this than have it underneath display so definitely a big improvement there over something like an under display fingerprint in my, in my experience. So you can see, if you look closely, they also did put a screen protector on board as well. These have been known to come off after a while, but we'll see how it goes. I can't report on that now because the Galaxy Z Flip 4 is still very new. And you can see, you can still kind of see through it a little bit. It's not perfectly closed just yet. So Samsung still got to work on, in, on innovating that to get it a little bit more closed. But overall, it's closed enough and it's it's very tough. It's a very tough build phone. So it feels very well ready for everyday usage. OK, so when it comes to the battery life, they've also improved this 3700 milliamp hour battery on board gets me through the day. But I think it's really down to how efficient the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is, because I'm telling you, this phone does much better, I find, than the Z Flip 3 did and the 2. So definitely 
very good here on the battery life, not bad. Also, I wanted to mention something about storage. I have the 128 gig cause I'm not gonna make this my main, but you do have the ability to go up to 512 gig now, pretty cool. However, that's gonna cost you a pretty penny. I see a spot available for a micro SD card, but it's not here. So if you want a micro SD card, you're not gonna get it here on this phone, but there would have been a spot right there. It's kind of funny cause Samsung actually makes some of the fastest micro SD cards available on the market. Actually, I'm shooting this video right now with that one, you know, I was talking about it could transfer 4k, 8k. It's pretty amazing SD cards, but they're not available no more. All right. So the cameras on here is a dual camera setup here. So we do have ourselves 12 megapixel dual setup and you know, it really does give us, you know, a little bit better sensor for low light photography. Other than that, it's not too much different than what I've seen before on the galaxy Z flip series. That is to say it's not Samsung's best camera, but it's not their worst. They also do have things like pro video, Pro modes, night modes, food modes, panoramic, super slow mo, slow motion, portrait video, and even director's view on here. So a lot of creativity you can do even though you're dealing with Samsung's flip phone. So one thing I really like is that all of the settings are right here within camera. So definitely you can change aspect ratios, you can change filters, video modes, all that stuff right here from within the camera. And it also has super steady depending on which version and you can do it when you're in like 4K, 8K, stuff like that, but it is available, so pretty nice. Actually, I'm not even sure this phone does 8K. I might have said that wrong. Let me go over here. Yeah, it looks like we have UHD 60 on this one, 4K 60, which is not bad whatsoever. And then on that front camera, you are gonna deal with Samsung's 10 megapixel. They've been using this one for a while, and you can do UHD 60 on the front of this as well. So. I'd say overall, this kind of competes well with something like an iPhone 13, something like that, but it's not gonna be like competing with the best Samsung camera. It doesn't zoom that far. As a matter of fact, it only goes digital zoom, 10X, doesn't even zoom optically. So if we go 0.5X, you'll get an ultra wide camera as well. That's fun, but this is kind of like your Apple iPhone 13, iPhone 12 camera of Samsung phones, You know, if, if that makes any sense. They're not gonna be zooming very far. Cameras are still good though, good enough for who's gonna be using this phone. So I'm pretty happy with the cameras as well. I'm not gonna say they're blowing me away, but they're strong. And a few other things I wanna note, it does have faster charging than before. And I just wanna quickly brush over some of my issues with this phone. Um, some of them are not big issues, they're all kind of minor. But this phone, one of the issues as I talked about earlier, just the crease, I feel it a lot more. I mean, it's not that visible. Yeah, honestly, I don't really see it that much throughout the day but I do feel it a lot and I don't like that too much. Another issue is that you know, this one to me is just not as exciting as the Z Fold 4. That's more subjective. It's not really an issue with the actual design. So this is more my personal opinion, my take on it. So don't be coming at me saying that's not even whatever, man, it's YouTube. I'm telling you how I feel about it. This phone is just kind of a, you know, it's an older idea. We used to have flip phones already. So it's not overly exciting in my opinion versus something like the folding Z Fold 4, but that's just my take. Some people might love that we have a smartphone that flips. I think at first it was pretty awesome, but now I think about it, we already had flip phones back in the day. Let me know how you feel about that one. But other than that, what's so cool about this phone is that it feels more pioneering than the other Samsung phones or other Samsung, or the other iPhones even, because it does something different. And this kind of reminds me of like when the iPhone was new and it did something different, but I feel like because of the branding, not everybody wants an Android phone, it seems like. You know, it's not taking off quite as much, I think, as a flip phone from Apple would, for example. But that's just how I feel about it. Overall, it's an amazing device, but I would skip it if you do have the Galaxy Z Flip 3. But if you can get a ridiculous deal on this, and I think it'll be worth it. It'll be durable, it'll last long, it has great battery life. And, and if you don't mind having an amazing flip phone, you're not really into the actual Fold, the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you might absolutely love this device right here. So that's pretty much my take on the Galaxy Z Flip 4. If you found the video helpful, entertaining, and informing, do me a favor, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well, and peace.